the American empires, such as the Aztecs and the Incas, were vast kingdoms with much technological and military might. They had unique innovations, such as floating gardens and mountainside farms. The question to ask ourselves, how were a few hundred Europeans able to conquer millions of American natives? The first simple answer is that natives trusted the Europeans, even to the level of gods, and Europeans manipulated this trust. The second reason is that Europeans had better weapons than natives with muskets and cannons that although inaccurate did much to scare anyone. Finally, disease brought by Europeans accidentally and intentionally killed millions of people. As Europe colonized the Americas, they needed a cheap labor source to work plantations and mine for gold and silver. The death of millions of natives from disease eradicated much of the population that Europeans had wanted to exploit for cheap labor. As a result, Europeans turned to slaves brought from Africa. Europeans also imported animals such as pigs, horses, and cattle to the Americas while shipping American foods such as corn, potatoes, tomatoes, and chocolate back to Europe. This exchange of diseases, goods, and ideas from one continent to another is known as the Columbian Exchange, which is different from triangular trade, which was the exchange of slaves and materials. The main exports produced from the Americas was tobacco, sugarcane, and silver. The sugar colonies brought much wealth to the European colonists, but they were also the source of one of the dark spots in human history. Sugar, which is originally from New Zealand, was brought to the Americas by Europeans and grew well in the humid regions of the Caribbean and Brazil. Growing and producing sugar was labor-intensive and required much cheap labor. As a result, 80% of, of all Africans enslaved in the Americas were in Brazil and the Caribbean. Many African slaves were brought to the sugar plantations that were known for their brutality. Many Africans lived short lives on sugar plantations. With the opportunity for much wealth, many Europeans quickly colonized the Americas in the 16th century. The Spaniards led the colonization of Latin America and brought with them ideas for major cities, universities, and Catholicism. Spanish colonies established a specific social order in which people's status were based on place of birth and race. For instance, people born in Spain, called peninsulares, were at the top. Creoles, Caucasians born in the Americas, came next. Mestizos, part Caucasian and part native, and mulattoes, African and Caucasian descent, came next then freed Africans and native, and finally African and native slaves. The British settled the northern regions of the Americas due to the fact that these were less desirable areas, and the British were late to the race for the Americas. However, many people from Britain settled these regions and quickly grew the European population in North America. By 1776, 90% of North American colonies' population were of European descent. British colonies differed from Spanish colonies in that British colonies had smaller farms with a smaller need for slaves. British colonies were Protestant, not Catholic. Finally, British colonies had a lot of self-rule, while Spanish colonies were heavily controlled by the Spanish monarchy in Europe. This self-rule in British colonies helped the British regions to develop more rapidly than the Spanish-controlled regions of Latin and South America.